Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Bringing another fly tying video this week. This week I'm going to do a dry fly. Well, it's actually an emerging dry fly. And uh, it's a generic style pattern. You can tie this whatever color you need to match the hatch. Um, this is a, an, it's an emerging mayfly. And, you know, like I said, you can tie it in a sulfur, a march brown. If you tie it really small, you can tie it is a blue winged olive if you really wanted to but you would be tying it very very small um, I like this pattern it's easy to tie it's you know with a little bit of practice if you tied lots of dry flies before you're gonna fly through this one it's very simple if you're you know accustomed to tying but even if you're not it's one even a beginner with a little bit of practice can pick up on so give it a try have fun like I said mess around with the colors to match the hatch of whatever you're trying I try on my videos, as you know, to share a lot of generic patterns which can be used to cover a multitude of species. This is one of them. So have fun and uh, catch some fish with it. Here you're going to see the fly in the vise and then the material list to tie it. Okay, here you see the Mayfly Emerger. This is just a generic color. It's what I'm going to be tying it in. Um, here, for example, maybe you want to do a sulfur color. And there's a sulfur color. I added um, the orange wing to it and just used a little bit of orange dubbing for the body to get me a sulfur look. So mess around, have fun, play around, use it. This is just a generic style pattern. For a hook, I am putting a 1770 Daiichi hook in the vise here. This one's a size 12. You can definitely go smaller. For thread, I'm using 140 denier um, rusty brown. And use whatever color you want there too. Um, you know, black, regular brown, whatever. For a tail, I'm using a little bit of medium pardo cocktailion. And I'm going to take about eight or ten fibers here and I want it to be about the length of what's going to be the shuck of this fly. So it's a little long, going to shorten it up a little bit. There we go. And wrap that back to that bend. Shorten it just a little bit more. And then I'm going to throw one wrap underneath it just to hold it up a little bit. And bring this back up. Now we're going to trim all these the butt ends off of here. The next thing I'm going to use is this is some uh, March Brown EP fibers and it's very little of it. I mean it's a very small piece of it. I want 20, 30 fibers on there max. And this is just going to be like the shuck, part of the shuck here. And I want it to go about three quarters of the way back through um, of my tail. You can see my tail comes to here my shuck comes to here. So the tail just barely sticks out of this March Brown shuck. So we're going to wrap right back there to where I finished up wrapping the tail before. Next thing I'm going to do is put on a small piece of this is actually fluoro. You definitely don't have to use fluoro but um, this is like 7x fluoro just a thin piece of mono, you know, like a two pound test tippet or something like that. And this is just to secure the next step, which is a piece of pheasant tail. And I don't want to add weight to it to make it sink. So I don't want to use um, like ultra wire or something there. So I'm just using a piece of mono and it doesn't have to show up. I don't really care about the ribbing. Next thing I'm going to use is some pheasant tail fibers and I'm going to take about 10 of these and I'm going to tie them in by the tips and just wrap that right back there to that tail and then wrap my thread back forward and I want to build up a little bit of thread here at the front of this so it kind of evens it out a little bit now we're just going to wrap these pheasant tail fibers forward and this is going to be the shock which my mayfly is going to emerge from so nice side by side wraps and wrap that up right to where 
the hook starts to bend upwards. That's my point that I want the shuck. I want the insect to emerge out of it. So just going to pull these up and cut it off. And then I'm going to take my monofilament and I'm going to counter rib. Got a little stray one there. And that's why we're counter ribbing here. Those are going to lock those in place. If a fish hits it and tears it up a little bit, it's just going to hold it together a little bit better. So I'm just going to counter rib up through here. Secure that pheasant tail a little bit better. And then tie this off. Okay, now we're going to make our mayfly emerging out of the shuck. To do that, I'm going to use some, this is SLF squirrel, this is natural fox. Um, use whatever color you want to, cr to imitate whatever, whatever um, mayfly you want to imitate. So like if you want to imitate a sulfur, use sulfur colors. Uh, March brown, this one would work great for a March brown. So I'm just going to wrap this back up, smooth it in, just make it just a hair bigger than my shuck there. Make a nice little ball. Now I'm going to come in with some dry fly hackle. This is a saddle feather. This is, um, this is dark bar ginger or Cree. Some people, if you have Cree, but dark bar ginger works just fine. And I'm just going to tie that down for me on the side here. I'm going to tie that in there nice. Nice and tight so it don't come out. And gonna go back to my dubbing. And I don't want this to be like super thick, but I want it to be on there and noticeable. So I'm gonna wrap it tight. But there's gonna be enough on there that you know it's you get the colors coming through. I'm not building it up too big, is what I'm trying to say. And I'm going to build this up to about a good solid eye width behind. That's where I want to stop this. I want a nice solid eye width of shank left here. And I'm going to take my hackle now and I'm going to make about four wraps forward. And this is going to create the legs of the fly. And we're going to tie this off. It's going to create, in essence, it's going to be imitating the legs, but for the sake of the fly, it's going to help it float. So now we're going to tie that off and trim it off. I'm just going to get a couple of those stragglers out of the way. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in on the top and I'm going to trim the hackle off down the middle of the top there. And that is to put my wing on. For the wing on this, I'm using some Dark Dunn EP fibers. Just going to set them on top here right there where I cut out. And what I like to do is I like to put it on the side closest to me and wrap it so it wraps right on top. So when it wraps around, it pops right up on top. Then I'm gonna trim it off here right behind the eye, get it nice and close. And make a few wraps backwards with it. Get it right back to that hackle. Now I'm gonna create, oh, I wanna trim up the stragglers there make a nice wing. You see, I got a nice wing there. Last thing I want to do is come in. I'm going to put a rusty brown head on this just to offset like a two color uh, body and head. So it's not going to take much of this rusty brown. Make it nice and tight here. Wrap this on. And I want to get right up here at this eye. I'm going to take and do a little twist on my thread. Spin my thread to tighten it up a little bit so I can make a nicer, tighter wrap for my whip finish. And I'm going to whip finish this off. And there you go. An easy with a little bit of practice, it's very easy fly, and it's a, you got a nice emerger, mayfly emerger, just a generic mayfly. Alright guys, I hope you like that pattern. Like I said, and I showed you, it wasn't hard to tie, um, and it's a good pattern, it'll catch your fish. Use your floating to keep it up there, 
and uh, have fun and experiment. Try different colors, like I said multiple times in this video. You know, match the hatch in your area, mess around, catch some insects when you're out on the stream, take them home and uh, use, the, use your dubbing and see what you can come up with. Um, you can try other materials for the shuck, but the pheasant tail just works so nice. And, um, you know, as they're emerging from that shell, a lot of the times they get that darker color. So the, the pheasant tail just makes a perfect shuck for a fly like this. So have fun. If you need any of the materials, like always, guys, head over to wholesingersflyshop.com. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Um, you know, we've been at this for a long time now, having a lot of fun bringing you guys videos every week on Thursday nights. And uh, subscribe to our channel, and every Thursday night at 7.30, you're going to get an Eastern time, I should say. You're going to get a no notification saying here's another video. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to leave, drop a comment down below or hit me up with an email at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. Till next week when I bring you another video, I'm Sean Holsinger.